We're going to be going through time-lapse compositions. One of the most important things when it comes to setting up your time-lapse is how to compose the shot. I'm going to be going through some of my favorite setups. I'll be showing you how I conceived them, how they were executed, and ultimately what the end result was. Hopefully along the way you'll see something that you like, you can pick up from it, and then ultimately hopefully inspire you to go out there and find beautiful compositions of your own. So let's dive in. The first composition we're going to look at is a stationary shot, but it's a stationary shot that's fixated to a moving vehicle. In this case, it's a New York City cab. The shot was conceived because the client wanted to see from the perspective of a New York City cab driver as they went through their day. I think the most difficult aspect of the shot was actually finding a cab driver that was willing to allow us to attach a rig to his car, and then the second was figuring out what the shutter speed and the interval worked best to execute the shot. We mounted a rig to the cab using a three-point suction cup mount, and then tied multiple safety ropes to it just in case something happened, which it didn't. And when we started shooting, I decided to use a one-second shutter speed with a two-second interval, but you know, as it started going, I found that it just didn't look right, especially because whenever the cab hit a bump or there wasn't levelness in the road, it really showed in the shot. The blur that was created just didn't look that appealing. Uh, so then I opted for a half second shutter speed with a one second interval, and that turned out to be the sweet spot to really get the shot the way that I wanted. The next series of compositions that I really enjoyed take place in Shanghai, China. The first was a super interesting shot of something that I had really never tried before, I never really thought about trying. The client wanted a shot from the perspective of a motorbike's mirror, but we didn't have a motorbike to use, um, and we wanted to do something that was practical. So instead of purchasing a motorbike, we actually went out and got a mirror from a shop, mounted it to our motion control rig, set the focus to the mirror, and came up with this really unique shot, um, something that I've never done before. The hardest part was really just finding a two-way composition that looked good both in the mirror and from behind the mirror. We ended up finding this really narrow alleyway that showed both the Shanghai TV Tower, which is very iconic, but was also busy with tourists, so we were able to film a bunch of different elements all in the same shot. After the shot, we headed to an area in the Shanghai called The Bund, where we were granted access to a top of a building right near the bank of the river. It really gave us this beautiful, spectacular view of the city, and below us we were able to see all of the commotion happening, whether it was with the people or the cars. It was just honestly complete chaos. I was using a 5-axis time-lapse rig at the time, and I was able to really show a unique movement using perspective motion, utilizing both the foreground and the background in a way that was both a reveal and an establishing shot. Finding new perspectives to shoot from or angles that you don't normally see is what really sells the final shot. When you're able to do something that's both interesting and tells a story, the imagery becomes so much more powerful as a tool or a vehicle uh, to progress the production. My next favorite composition uses reflection again, and it's coupled with a giant 60-floor skyscraper and busy New York City streets. Uh, this is likely my number one shot that I've ever taken just because the way that it came about finding it was quite interesting and unique. Uh, I really never intended to shoot this actual shot because instead the client wanted uh, just rooftop shots of other rooftops from a rooftop. This is another case where if you're not looking in all directions, up, down, left, right, uh, you may actually miss a really beautiful shot. And in this case, it was a happy accident that I actually looked down and I saw the mirrors and I saw how the reflections were working in the shot. And I really thought to myself, wow, this could be an incredible time-lapse shot. And it turned out to be an incredible time-lapse shot. Heading into the Swiss Alps, this next shot is an incredibly simple execution, but I just love how the stars and the light from the moon really help create depth and mood in the frame. This was taken in Zermatt, Switzerland in April during a full moon, and the temps were around negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which was probably the biggest hurdle in setting up this shot. I had to use a combination of lens warmers and hands warmers uh, for the body and the lens and the motion control rig because the power was draining so quickly due to the cold. The shot took around 8 hours to film and there was actually around 200 frames at the end that didn't get captured because all of the equipment died during the shoot. This goes back to why it's important to prepare for your shoot and to make sure you have contingencies in place if things go wrong. Uh, the bright side of the story is that the client loved the first 15 seconds of the shot and it's exactly what they were looking for. So even though we lost power at the very end of the sequence, we were able to get the shot that the client ultimately wanted. I chose this particular composition because I wanted to include some of the mountaintops in the shot to give the viewer a sense of perspective and location, but the ultimate goal was just to track the stars as they moved across the night sky. This last composition may be my most iconic setup, as it was the frame used to create the main title graphic for Netflix's House of Cards. The composition of the shot came about because the production wanted a scene that depicted the U.S. Capitol in a dark, gritty light, so I ended up having to wait three or four weeks for the perfect weather to happen to snag this shot. Since everything related to the clouds and the feel of those clouds, I attempted this shot multiple times and this was ultimately the winner. Now that you've seen a variety of compositions that can be created with time lapse, it's time you get creative to see what you can make. There's an endless world of beauty that surrounds us, often overlooked and hidden. 
If you've always wanted to learn how to create beautiful cinematic time-lapse, then join me, time-lapse photographer and cinematographer Drew Geraci, in my new pro time-lapse course on MZ.com. I've gotten to work with some of Hollywood's top directors to help bring their ideas to life, and in this two-part course, I'll show you how to do the same. You'll learn everything you need to know to create absolutely beautiful, stunning time lapses for personal or commercial use. I'll teach you the ins and outs of setting up your camera, choosing the right compositions, and the best workflows for 2023. Of course, I'll also teach you how to create beautiful, seamless day-to-night transitions. We'll go through every detail in a thorough step-by-step -step process so it's easy to learn and retain. I hope you'll join me. 